Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Pirates of the Seven Seas. I mean, I wish I had like an eye patch or something like that, but I do not. I could like uh, regale you with plenty of R mateys and whatnot, but I'll try to keep that to a minimum as well and just talk about this game, which is so clever. And, you know, it's just so unique and such a breath of fresh air. It's really, really delightful. I, you know, and I, I guess that's not surprising because the designers, Alexander uh, uh, Nuski and Oleg uh, Sidorenko. I'm sorry, guys, if I got your names wrong. There are a couple of you, um, not... Yeah, Ukrainian designers. In the past, I've said Hungarian. Sorry, guys. There are a couple of Ukrainian designers who, previous to this, put out the excellent Mysterium, which, you know, turned out to be a monster hit. Everybody absolutely loved it. And this is their follow-up to that. And much like Mysterium was like a really clever and original take on existing games, this one is too, because the central mechanism that drives this entire game, this combat resolution system of just taking a fistful of dice, dropping it into the middle of your box lid, and then, you know, let the dice fall where they may, the die are cast, and then you just do this really simple accounting thing of, okay, who's closest? Boom. Oh, they died, they died, they died, they died. And then it's such a wonderful, elegant, and clever way to emulate uh, combat between a whole bunch of different factions. I mean, there's potentially, if you're playing a four-player game, five factions battling it out on the board, and it just works so nicely. And it's so much more interesting and exciting than, oh, well, okay, I'll roll four attack dice, they roll two defense dice, let's see how it works out, and it blah, you know, the most boring stuff in the universe. I mean, Jen, I, um, you know, I, I, I've expressed in my past my dis... Uh, Disdain? No, distaste? My disinterest in standard role to resolve. So I love that this game kind of pretty much reinvented dice combat. And it's just so wonderful, so clever, and it just works so nicely. It's just fast, 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 and fun. But what's interesting is the dice combat is really is not the star of the show here. It's just one of the things you do. I mean, over the course of the game, you'll have several fights you're involved in, but they are just, I mean, the real crux of this game where most of the thought goes into is the action selection. Which character am I going to pick this turn? I want to make sure I pick a character that nobody else does so I can get that benefit. Um, what is everybody else going to do? Getting into everybody else's head so you can make smart choices. That's where the game comes alive. And then, you know, every once in a while, you'll roll some dice and that will be a seed that brings more stuff into the game to drive the real game. And so that's actually very interesting. That it, the core, and you know, don't get me wrong, the character selection stuff works really nicely. I can imagine as a three or four player game, this must be aces. Here's the thing, as a two player game, it's okay, but you know, the whole, oh, we're both choosing a card, it's secret, and I'm trying to figure out what you're doing, and you're trying, in a two player game, that's never gonna be as interesting or as compelling as it is with more players. And they've done the best they can to try and make it interesting by you know, making the first player come into effect that, okay, well, it only matters if I'm the first player, I wanna be alone. If I'm not the first player, then I wanna figure out what you're doing to make sure you don't get that bonus, if it makes sense for me to do it, et cetera, et cetera. It works, but it would be so much more fun and engaging if there are multiple people around the table and you're trying to outguess everybody. Plus, um, you, know, the, you know, the change they've made for this, it, it does make some fundamental changes to the game. Like, you know, the biggest one is, oh, where is the governor? I cannot find a governor card to save my life. But the interesting thing is with three or four player games, if you play the governor by yourself, here it is, and you are the only player to do it, you get to double this. You get to remove two black marks. So in three or four player games, it's possible to start removing marks over the course of the game, which is huge. In a two player game, that is literally impossible. So once you get marks, you're stuck with it. And that implicitly makes the danger, or I'm sorry, not marks, spots. Getting these black spots, you can never get rid of them once you've got them in a two player game, which means getting a letter of the mark is implicitly less interesting because once you got it, you know there's nothing you can do about it. So overall, the game is okay two-player, but it really comes alive with, four, with three or four. You know, not surprisingly, because, hey, there's more dice flying, and, and, you know, so there's more people involved in the fights. There's more people to get into, and there's more interesting decisions to make because the effects of the bonuses, when you can quadruple bonuses every once in a while, you know, once around the table, that is so huge. It's, so, the game is okay, and I would suspect it's brilliant with three or four. I haven't gotten to play it, but man, if we had three or four players on the regular, it may very well be a keeper. Although, I gotta say, this is just a personal peccadillo for me and Jen. So, like always, you should really not pay attention to what Jen and I like or dislike, because it doesn't really matter. But we are not big fans of, like, really in-your-face, take-that 
knife stabby games. And the curses in this game cast by the shaman, those things are just all about just trying to beat your opponent into the dirt. And I'm just not a big fan of that. And it's a real shame that there's such a big component. Another interesting thing too, the curses are implicitly less powerful in only a two-player game as well. So everything just kind of diminishes in the two-player game. Um, so if you've got three or four players. This is a great family game. Everybody would understand how it works. The set collection is fairly simple. It's no more complex than, say, Stone Age or, or heck, even Ticket to Ride. The rolling of the dice is always very exciting. And the reveal of, oh my god, I can't believe you did that. Why did you do that? There was no reason. You know, that stuff is all great. It's a wonderful three or four player game and OK2 okay player game. And no matter what player count, it's beautiful. This art is gobsmacking and gorgeous. This box is wonderful. The packaging, everything, it's an 11. It's just really, really great. So, if you're looking for a lighter gateway or gateway plus family game with a little bit of take that and a really, really fun central mechanism, you can't go wrong. Now, as promised, and I said right up, or I said, you know, I'm not just talking about seven or seven seas today, Pirates of the Seven Seas, because there's an interesting development history here. Like I said, Alexander and Oleg, they designed this game. Um, you know, I'm sure this is the game they wanted to make. It's a really sharp game. They did a wonderful job. It introduces this really cool new dice battle mechanism. Here's where things got interesting. Designer Ignace Treptek, a uh, Polish designer from CGE, no, from Portal Games, derp, ah, from Portal Games, he knows these guys. He likes them. He did the Polish version of Mysterium. Um, and turn into Time Each Age Mosul. So he already knew them. He saw this game they did, and he immediately fell in love with this dice mechanism and absolutely loved it. And he wanted a game that was 100% about the dice. In Pirates of the Seven Seas, the dice is just like a cool little mini game. The real game is about the character, the action selection, the uh, set collection, or, you know, the, you know, and all that stuff. That's where the game is, and then there's some fun dice stuff. Um, Ignace loved it so much, he wanted to have a game about the dice. So he talked to the guys, and he actually licensed their game system. And I just got to say, a big hats off to Ignacy. That is so awesome. He didn't have to. I mean, he could have just stolen the idea outright. He could have just mimicked it. And, you know, a lot of players do. A lot of game developers do that because, um, you know, because it's not like you can patent game ideas. You, you simply cannot do that. It, you know, it won't hold up. So Ignacy could have just said, "Oh, that was cool." And you know, and if you, you know, I, I'm going to put this in my own game. And you know, when most people do that, you know, they're cool. They actually put a special thanks in the rules. Thank you so much to Designer X. He really inspired us. We loved his idea, and it helped us make our game. And that's great. You know, you see lots of examples of that. I have no problem with that. I mean, heck, I'm guilty of it myself from making video games for um, decades. I was more than happy to copy ideas from other people, um, and you'll know, give credit where credit's due. But Ignacy went one step above and beyond, and he actually licensed the idea, and then he made. Rattle Battle, Grab the Loot. Now, I'm going to be doing a run-through for this game independent of this. You can find the links for it in the show notes, on the screen once it's available. And so you can go, because I'm sure a lot of people are saying, well, wait a minute, I love this whole dice thing. Which of these games should I get? Should I get the original, Pirates of the Seven Seas, or should I get the alternate? Should I get the Ukrainian game or the Polish game? Um, what's the difference? How do I choose? Well, here's the dealio. It's interesting. I mean, the, both games, the, the combat is really fun. But the fundamental difference is the combat is a fast, quick, um, little bit of spice in, an, in, an, in a role selection game, is what it is over here. The combat is everything in this game, because what Rattle Battle Grab the Loot is, um, it took the dice game and put in special dice with all kinds of icons and whatnot, and gave these ships special power. So after you roll, you don't just do boop, 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 okay, here's how it goes, let's resolve. Instead, you start doing stuff like, okay, well, this ship can move over here, and this ship has extra cannon, so it is stronger than this ship, and, and you start getting the, the combat in Rattle Battle Grab the Loot is the game. You start with the rolling, and then you do a bunch of other stuff. In uh, Part 7 Seas, you start and end. So that creates a very interesting and different feel. This game also has, you know, getting loot and going to port and selling it so that you can get upgrades. But in this game, you've got just a couple little upgrades. It just kind of overall feed the engine. In this game, it's all about building a ship and upgrading it and making that ship more powerful so you can do better in these combat things. And half of the game is combat, and it's not a fast thing. And and so, it's interesting. 
Some people have complained that Rattle Battle Grab the Loot is cool and fun and neat, but is too long for what it is. It's too slow because, depending on how complex the combat could get, depending on what players have done, what their upgrades for their ships are and whatnot, it can take a while. And wait, 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 you know, and you spend more time in this game actually having to get out the ruler and measure because it matters. This game is light and fast and breezy. This is a gateway. This is a gamer's game is basically what it comes down to. They both use the same system. This turns it into a more complex, little, almost kind of like a miniature skirmish game. This just keeps it light and simple. This is a great game for families. And the interesting thing is, this is a great game with more players. The fewer players you've got around the table, the less interesting this is. It's almost the case that it's the opposite over here. Because the combat is so big and complex, relatively, it's still a light game, don't get me wrong, but relative to this, this game is much more heavy and complex. There's a lot more stuff going on. The combat takes a lot longer. So, you're probably going to have more fun playing this game with fewer players. This game is more fun with more. This game is more fun with less. This is more of a family fast fun gateway. This is more for um, uh, you know, gamers. Who are, who are past gateways and are looking for kind of clo something close to a medium weight game as opposed to a lightweight game. So, they're both fun. Jen and I enjoy them both, but for us, this is the one because we only play games two players, so this is always a little bit handicapped. And the interesting thing is, this game, again, has more screwage, has more take that in it with all the, the curses. This game, you can pretty much play it with almost no take that in it at all. You have options. You can play a very aggressive, in-your-face, straight-up battle game. In this game, it comes with a variant where my ships can actually attack your ships and whatnot. So it gets much more complex. It can be much mean, but you can also have a, uh, a uh, the friendly, the, 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 the no-conflict version of this game where players are just pretty much just racing to be the best they can be. And then this game doesn't have anywhere near as much meanness in it because it doesn't have the big curses that try to hit everybody at the table and whatnot. So it really comes down to, it's a great system. If you like pirates and you like dice, you kind of have to get one of these. And I think more than anything else, the decision should be, are you going to play this more with more players or fewer players, with gateway family players or gamers who are used to more complex stuff? And that's it, folks. That is Pirates of the Seven Seas with a brief little bit of information about Rattle Battle Grab the Loot as well. And so, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. Apologies for any mistakes I made. But if you see anything, definitely let us know. We'll get them noted up as always. And otherwise, talk to you later, everybody. So long. Bye-bye.